I just got back from the Pacific Northwest Board Game Swap. It's the second time this event was held. It's called at this uh, kind fellow named Sean's Estate. And I went, well, that's a, it's a house with a lot of yard and they have a great tire swing. Um, there's stone steps that go up to this platform in which there's a table. This is all outside. They can play games. Anyway, it's, uh, he opens up this house, he cooks food for people, and gives prizes. Uh, just so people can trade games and sell games and whatnot. I spent my time trading games for the most part. I uh, got there, did a flurry of trades, um, traded things I traded to people who wanted them, and just kind of shifted goods around, which was a lot of fun. It was a lot, a lot of busyness, um, busyness, but a lot, a lot of fun. So like at one point I had Nexus Ops in shrink wrap with the neon pieces, but I traded that to someone else who would rather have Nexus Ops. Um, I would enjoy looking at the neon pieces more than I would enjoy Nexus Ops. Um, did the same thing with Axis and Allies. Did the same thing with this game called Midgard. Did the same thing with this game called... <sighs> forget. Anyway, a lot of games passed through my hands. Ended up with a lot of games, and I'm really excited to show you what I got. So, I am a fat man. I am a obese individual. I am well fed uh, through these trades. And I don't think I got rid of anything I really particularly wanted. Um, I mean, traded. And the things I did trade that I kind of liked, it was okay because the person who got it would like it even more. Oh, like I got this game called Abaddon uh, at Goodwill for a really cheap price and was able to trade that for several games. Things like that. Very good. So I'll just go through. There's a free cable. Got this game, or box. Got this game, Limbo. I'm gonna actually focus in for these parts so you can see all the games I got. And you can be so jealous because I am such a fortunate individual to be able to spend the day in the sun and get games. That's not all I did. Um, I did manage to play a couple of games. The uh, first one, there's a story behind it. The last time I went to a board game swap, uh, was a local one. This one was in Puyallup, uh, Washington, so I had to drive on the interstate, which was kind of nerve-wracking. I haven't done it in a while, but by the time, I don't know, I won't go into that. Uh, but la that time, there was someone I had played the game Princess with, and I was telling someone about Princess, and lo, that, that person showed up with his daughter, and Princess is now her favorite game because of that, so that was nice, and I got to play Princess. Well, I didn't really play Princess, I kind of ran Princess, for a group of kids, um, two games of Princess, and I also played Innovation, and I also ate food. We got this game, Draco Mundus. I don't know. It's a it's an explorer game. We got another explorer game too, but that's not in this box. We got this for free. I got um, America's Civil War, 1861 to 1865. It's a micro game, a mini game, Counter Strike. I don't know, it has counters. It's by Fiery Dragon, my first Fiery Dragon game. Little binder in there. I don't want this to turn into an unboxing, but this is one that I didn't know a lot about. But, you know, a lot of times when I'm trading, I'll just trade because the person wants to trade. I have something they want and something that they'll probably appreciate more than me. And I may be interested in something that they have, whether I like it or not. I got this horse racing game for um, Mountains of Inferno I traded. And I mainly did that because the guy really wanted Mountain of Inferno, and I didn't know if I was going to end up playing it. Um, I got this game called Michelangelo. It said something about intrigue on the box. I kind of suspect it probably has nothing to do with intrigue and maybe comes down to numbers. I don't know. Uh, but it's called Michelangelo, and that's fine. Um, three, day, three ten in the, the world games. 10 days in Africa, 10 days in Europe, and 10 days in America. I brought 10 days in the USA, ended up trading that, um, and got these. I, I got these mainly for the children at my child care, because I feel like it's good for them to see other parts of the world, and this will get them to focus on that. My son, too, he likes 10 days in the USA, so I got rid of that, because there's so much USA in the USA that it's nice to have some other countries, too. Um, got this for free. Not bad. I got two horse racing games. That's funny. Um, I got this Watergate. It's part of a trade, part of a larger trade. Um, now we're getting to the more interesting stuff. Chill Black Mourn Manure. This game, I guess, is supposed to be like Betrayal at the House on the Hill, except older 
and it has a dent in it. Um, that should be fun to explore. Got the Oregon Trail. Don't know anything about it. I used to play the video game. Um, it's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, it's a curio. It was interesting. Campaign manager. Um, traded this for Midgard, which I traded something else for. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have. I'd probably be more interested in 1960, but they said this was a good like. Um, preparatory game for Twilight Struggle. I don't feel like I need a preparatory game for Twilight Struggle. Like I could just play Twilight Struggle. But, um, you know, it'd be, it's, I like election stuff. So I think that's fun. I got Struggle of Nations. This was I traded for Feudo, which is a game I'm not that interested in. I, I don't know if I'm any more likely to play this one. Um, I think it's... I think... Yeah. I won't say anything else about that. It's in shrink wrap, though. Some people, that's important to them. Temple of the Beast Men. That's that's going to be a lot of fun to enjoy. Um, class struggle. My one one big reason I got this is it's called class struggle. It has this kind of wacky box and then a post-it with a question mark on it. I don't know if you can see that from this distance, but uh, and, and that's where the person would have said if it was complete or not. Um, it's partially punched, so I'm assuming it's complete. If not, that's not the end of the world. It's music. Yeah. All right, and then we have. Pax Britannica. I'm excited for this one. Uh, I believe it's a multiplayer game. Um, yeah, four to seven. I think this is going to be interesting. This is one I've actually wanted, and so I'm glad I was able to pick that up. Firepower. This is just one I got because someone wanted something, and I don't know. It could be interesting. Um, they said it was comparable to Ambush, but I don't know if they knew for sure. Uh, but it could be interesting firepower. And then, it turns out I got a lot of these kinds of games. I didn't end up, I didn't start with a lot of these bookshelf games, but I ended up with them. This is one I've been wanting. Yellowstone, this is, this is probably my find for the, the trade thing. Uh, maybe this or Pax Britannica. Um, really excited to have Yellowstone. Uh, it's a, it's a children's game. Like, you're supposed to be able to play with children's, children, but it's an Avalon Hill bookshelf game. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. There's lots of little animals in it, and I don't know, it's, it's got, like, maybe a subject matter that you would expect from a Euro nowadays, but it's kind of got this older feel, which uh, I like, and there's wildlife and all of that. I've never been to Yellowstone, and I don't know that I ever will go to Yellowstone, so at least I'll be able to experience it through Yellowstone, the game. Someone said it's better than Outdoor Survival. Here's another one. Another exploratory game. We got Source of the Nile. I'm excited for this one. Probably more so than that other exploration game here on Coast Mundi. But um, yeah, there we go. Got that. It's, it's one where you're exploring. I like exploration in games. Uh, did I say I played Innovation? Speaking of exploration in games, that's good. Oh, here's one I've been wanting Kingmaker. And I got it. So good for me. I brought a notebook. I should always bring a notebook uh, because you might need to write something down. And then my friend Ejo gave me this one. I didn't even trade for it. It's called Sandman. So, okay, oh, you know what? I have more games in the trunk. I'm gonna go get those, pause it, and come back. I thought I had more, yeah. They just didn't, they didn't um, make it into these bags because they're so, so big. So you're gonna wanna see all of those too. So you can be jealous of me because I got so much stuff. They don't usually like to have to cut in these, um, which is the technical term for when you stop the camera and start it again. Um, but I did, because I had to go get some more games that I got. So I got Space Force, which has a great name, and then it ends up it's about like using metal, long metal chopsticks to maneuver this marble. This was for free. This was in a free box. Also in a free box, it's nice bowling game. Look at it. It's a little pin and it has dice with pins on it. Um, so there's that. You can use it for a book stop if nothing else. Um, the Creature That Ate Sheboygan. Uh, someone informed me this is a good name. I, good game. I like to say the name. I like to say Sheboygan, which I think a lot of people do, uh, which is probably why they titled this game Sheboygan. Because they could have had it they could have had it be another town that the creature ate. Um, I've actually looked into this game in the past. Um, 
And I think one person is the creature, and the other people are the people who fight the creature. I'm thinking, if I remember correctly, but this is what I wanted, so that's great. Another game that I wanted that I was able to nab, Road to the White House. Um, yeah, I like, I like political games. Uh, I think that's, that's interesting subject matter. I will have to check um, the veracity of that game. Another free one. This one reminds me of my regatta game in terms of the packaging. Um, but it's Thinking Man's Golf. And this was for free. Very good condition. It looks like it's a really wonky sort of golf game, which is great. Probably involves dice rolling. I see some dice, but dice rolling to see if what kind of, how your whatever swing does. Um, I wonder if it won't be generic players, uh, kind of akin to NFL strategy, as opposed to players with certain skills. Um, we got Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the game. I hope it's the, the, the American version and not the British one. I heard the... Nothing against our friends in the British Isles, but I hear that one's not very good. Um, I got this in part because I, we have uh, some clients of our childcare who really like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I think they like games. I, I loan them um, the Doctor Who storytelling game because they also like that. Um, so hopefully they'll enjoy this as well. And it's one that I kind of wanted uh, over the over my gaming years. I got made for trade. Um, this I just got mainly for the subject matter. It's pioneering. It might be fun for the children. This one uh, I knew about ahead of time that I was going to try and get there. It's called War Machine, an exciting game of diplomacy, economics, and military warfare. I always like it when I, the, the kind of warish games I like are warish games that have more than just war in them. If it's just fighting, I don't really I'm not, I don't feel that interested in the game. If there's um, economics and diplomacy, though, I find that a lot more interesting. Not a lot, no information that I could find on this game, War Machine, looks kind of abstract. Um, it was made in Alaska uh, from the Borealis Board Game Company. So this is kind of a, yeah, I, I like things from small presses because you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I, have, I do know what I'm going to get with Tannhauser. Tannhauser is a game back in when I first started that I thought was interesting. It has an alternate history thing going on. Um, some kind of interesting kind of very component-y uh, mechanisms going on. I don't know, that's one I will try out. And then we end with the Dragon Man King. We end with it because it's the biggest one. Um, this one I actually bought for $10. Everything else I traded for, I got for free. Uh, I did that because I, I used to read those books when I was a teen, and I think I played the game once upon a time before I knew about games. Um, and it looks like something that would be, you know, it's got hexes, it's got characters with powers, that'll be fun. It'll be fun to play this. Um, so there we go. That was my, my trip. Lots of friendly people, got to meet some people um, that from the internet world. Um, got to meet some more gamers from the area. Might play with some of them sometime. I know I exchanged numbers or e emails with a guy who wants to play Cold War because I brought that. Um, got to play two of my favorite games. Got to pretend to be a spy for a while. Got to um, eat some food. The, the bathroom at this place was phenomenally clean and smelled really good. And it had Scrabble tiles you could write words with while you took a whiz. All right, thanks.